Next, I want to talk about deductive reasoning. Okay, so inductive reasoning, we start with examples and then we look for the general pattern. And deductive reasoning basically goes the opposite way. So deductive reasoning is a process of proving a specific conclusion from one or more general statements. A conclusion that is proved to be true by deductive reasoning is called a theorem. So notice the difference here. We are actually proving something to be true. With inductive reasoning, we were never proving anything. We could prove something was false, right, by using a counterexample, but we could not prove something was true. We could always we could either have a strong or a weak argument for why it was true, but it would never prove it. So deductive reasoning actually lets us prove something. So here's a couple examples, and this is going to be a correct method. So here's a correct way to use deductive reasoning. So one here's the example. One player says to another in a Scrabble game. So Scrabble, if you've never played, um, look it up. It's a game of words. So basically one person writes a word with their, um, you have tiles, you have to make words from the tiles, and then you keep building on the words. So I put my word down on the board first, and then someone else has to build their word off my word. Um, so it's a game of words and making words. So one player to another in Scrabble game says, you have to remove those five letters. You can't use Texas as a word. So why did he make that statement or why did she make that statement? And that's because in Scrabble, you cannot use proper names. So you can't use names, nothing with a capital letter. It's not allowed in Scrabble. That's one of the rules of the game. So the general statement is that all proper names are prohibited in Scrabble. Well, Texas is a proper name. So the conclusion is that Texas is prohibited from Scrabble. So the word Texas. So we're taking a general or multiple general statements that we know are already correct, right? So these are already true and correct. And then we're going to a specific question. So we know in Scrabble that you cannot play proper names. We know that Texas is a proper name, right? It's the name of a country. Uh, sorry, name of country, my goodness, the name of a state, losing my mind, um, the name of a state. Um, so our specific conclusion then is that the word Texas is not allowed in Scrabble. So we're going from general statements down to specific conclusions um, that are also true, right? That we are, are true. So if we start with true statements, then we can get a true conclusion. My goodness, I can't believe I said Texas was a country. Need more coffee. I apologize. I know it's a state. Slip of the tongue. All right. So here's an example that would be inaccurate. So not a good example of deductive reasoning. So advice to college freshmen on choosing classes. So an advisor says to their freshman students, never sign up for a 7 a.m. class. Yes, I know you made it in high school, but mom was always there to keep waking you up. And if by some miracle you do make it to an early class, you will sleep through the lecture when you get there. Um, now, this isn't always bad advice for certain students, right? So if you're a student who is maybe moving to college and living in a dorm and it's your first time away, I probably would not recommend a 7 a.m. class. They're very early. Um, a lot of students find, not everybody, but a lot of students find they enjoy sleeping in the morning. Um, they stay up a lot later than they usually do at school. So maybe 7 a.m. class is not for you. So the idea of an uh, advisor kind of warning their students about 7 a.m. classes is not necessarily a bad one but their reasoning is bad. So let's look at that. So the general statement that this person is using is that all people need to sleep or sleep until 7 a.m. And you sign up for a 7 a.m. class. Therefore, you will sleep through the lecture and not make it to class. So the reason this is a poor example of deductive reasoning, um, although the process is correct, so they took two general statements, right? The idea that people need to sleep and that they took a 7 a.m. class and they got the conclusion that the student will oversleep. Um, the problem is that the general statements are assumptions about all people's sleep patterns and they are not necessarily true. So when we have our general statements, we need to make sure we're sure that we're starting with something that is already true. Now, for many people, this may be true, right? So if you are working with a student or you have a friend 
where you know yourself and you're like, you know what? I know myself. I never get up before 9 a.m. without, you know, mom or dad waking me up. Then that's different. You're looking at yourself and you know your own habits, right? So you know that statement is true for you. But for a lot of students, they may be used to getting up early in the morning or maybe they have other obligations during the day. So a 7 a.m. class is best for them. So when we're doing our deductive reasoning, we have to make sure that our general statements are actually true before we apply them to everybody. Now, how can we tell inductive reasoning from deductive reasoning? This is really important. So inductive reasoning begins with specific examples and then it goes to a general statement. Deductive reasoning begins with a general statement and then goes to specific examples. So they, they kind of work the opposite way. In the following example, we're gonna use a letter to represent a number. So just remember that a letter used to represent any number is called a variable. So going back to your algebra class here. All right, so here's an example and we're gonna use both deductive and inductive reasoning and kind of look at the difference. So example five, considering the follow, following procedure, select a number, Multiply the number by six, add eight to the product, divide by two, and then subtract four. Part A, repeat this process with at least four different numbers, and then write a conjecture that relates the result of this process to the original number stated. This is inductive reasoning because we're starting with specific examples, right? We're gonna do four specific examples first, and then we're going to the general statement. So let's choose the number. So I'm gonna choose the number uh, one and let's see what happens. So I select my number and multiply it by six. One times six is six. I add eight to that number. Six plus eight is 14. Uh, let's see, I divide the sum by two, which gives me seven. And then I subtract four from my number, which is three. All right, let's do a different number. I'm gonna do number two. So I set up my number. I multiply that number by six. Two times six is 12. I add eight to that number. So 12 plus eight gives me 20. I divide it by two, which is 10. And then I subtract by four, which is six. All right, let's pick another number. I'm gonna pick 10. All right, so let's do 10 times six is 60. I add eight, I get 68. I need to divide the sum by two. 68 divided by two is gonna be 34. And then I subtract by four and I get 30. Now, this is a great time to pause the video and give this a try on your own. So choose your own number. It can be small, it can be large, it doesn't matter. Let's try a hundred, right? And just see what you get. Uh, so pick your own number if you want. Pause the video, see what you get. I'm gonna do 100. 100 times six is 600. Plus eight is 608. Divided by two, let's see, is 304. And subtract four is 300. So let's see what happened here. In my first example, I started with one and I ended up with three. Here I started with two and I ended up with six. I started with 10 and I ended up with 30. Here I started with 100 and I ended up with 300. So what could be my conjecture then? What do I see happening for the pattern? Well, it looks like overall, my starting number is just getting multiplied by three. One times three is three, two times three is six. 10 times three is 30, 100 times three is 300. So it looks like the number selected is multiplied by three, right? That's the overall conclusion. That's what's happening here. So this is an example of inductive reasoning. I'm starting with four specific examples and then I'm drawing a conclusion from it. Now. This is a strong conclusion, I think, because I have four different, totally different examples and they all seem to be working, but it's not a proof. It's not a 100% proven true. Um, I feel good about it. I have four different examples that support it, but it's not a proof. So inductive reasoning is never proven true. 
To do that, we need deductive reasoning, and that's part B here. So what we're going to use this time is the variable n to represent the original number. And we're going to use deductive reasoning to prove our conjecture. Now, the reason this is deductive reasoning is because we're starting with a general case. So that variable n lets us start with the general case. So it lets us look at every single number, not just four specific numbers. That n lets us look at everything. So it lets us generalize this to all possible numbers. So that's why this is deductive reasoning, because we're starting with a general case, and then we can go to the conclusion afterwards. All right, so I'm going to start with n. I'm going to multiply by 6. Yeah, so you can see that. So I'm just reading the directions up here. I know um, you're not going to watch this if I can zoom out a little bit. There we go. So we're going to multiply by 6. So n times 6 is 6n. I'm going to add 8 to it. So I have 6n plus 8. Divide it by 2. Now just be careful. When you divide by 2, that means both parts have to get divided by 2. So it becomes 6n over 2 plus 8 over 2, which is 3n plus 4. And then subtract 4 from the quotient. Well, if I minus this 4, I have 3n. So what I've seen now is that n becomes 3 And this works for all n, every single number, right? So this is not a specific example. This is a general statement because I am looking at every single possible number. N is a general statement. Um, so that variable allows us to take this and now it is deductive reasoning. So now I can actually see that this is in fact true, right? It's true for all n. Um, so I this is now proven, right? N goes to 3n. We can see the multiplication there. Um, and that would be called, again, using deductive reasoning.